All right, and good morning. It is good to have you guys here at Cornerstone. Just before we get started, we found some keys over here in the horseshoe um, section of the parking lot. It has a library card on it as well. So if that is you, I have that. Let me know and we'll get that to you. But let's go ahead and get our services started. Come on in, take your hymnals 585 this morning. 585, we'll sing both verses this morning. Brethren, we have met to worship, so get your hymnals out, 585. Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while we preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit Please remain standing as we open in prayer. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you most of all for the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank you, Lord, for this church, Lord, and what it's stood for all these years. We just pray now that you would be a pastor as he brings forth your word, that the Holy Spirit would come down upon him, and our hearts would be open into the Holy Spirit, Lord, and we would obey what you would have us to do, Lord. And I just pray if there's a young person or an older person out here that does not know Christ, that today they would come to know Jesus. There's someone struggling with sin in their life or just whatever's going on, Lord, that you would just convict them, they would make it right and cast their burdens upon you. We just pray now that what is ever said and done would magnify and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Please remain standing. We're going to turn it over to 542 in our hymnals. When we all get to heaven, sing that wondrous love of Jesus this morning. 542, we'll do all four verses. Lift it up when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy, his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all Thank you for standing. 
Amen and good morning. Good to have you today in the Lord's house and trust the Lord will bless you as we look at his word in just a little while. Just a couple reminders. Tonight we do have the Lord's Supper. If you're a church member, you'll want to be part of that. And so just be aware of that. Next Sunday uh, is Labor Day. And so we'll have the morning service uh, and then we'll have a pitch in dinner and come back around one or so and have the afternoon service and get home a little early that day. So uh, just be aware of next Sunday schedule. It's just a little bit different, uh, but we, we do that sometimes with the holidays. It just works out good for everyone with that. Be in prayer because we do have a lot of people traveling over that uh, next weekend, and we want them all to get back to us safely. And again, I'd mention the... Uh, uh, students are going away for college. This is if this is your last Sunday with us, uh, then uh, ask you to come stand with me in the foyer. I'm not going to try to enlist the names. I'm going to get confused, forget somebody, and get myself in trouble. So you know if you're going to college, right? If you don't, you better start figuring it out <laughs> because you got some major problems. All right. <laughs> Okay, and uh, I think James has a couple announcements, and then we'll come back and receive the offering. Yes, just a couple of announcements. Uh, first and foremost, we this Friday we have our first youth rally of the new season. Um, it's going to be this Friday, September the 2nd at 7 o'clock um, here at the church, and we have a big activity afterwards at Sky Zone um, in Sparta, a couple of places over in Fishers, uh, but we're also going to be serving pizza, and uh, so we need baked goods, we need some chocolate chip cookies, um, no oatmeal raisin, no peanut butter, nothing like that. The kids don't like them. Only chocolate chip cookies will be good. Uh, make sure, and just brownies, anything like that, any kind of baked goods you would like to bring. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet in the back, uh, or if you want to come see me or see Penny King, uh, she could help you. We also need help with people to serve dinner and to help with trash and to help with different things like that. Uh, so if you've done that in the past and you would like to do that again, please come and sign up at the bulletin board or on the table out there, or come and see me or my mom, and we'll put you to work. All right, next Sunday as well, we will have our churchwide cookout um, and camp out out at the Tatton's house. Um, it's going to be a potato, um, we're going to have like a potato bar. Um, we'll have a lot of fun with that. We're going to have uh, maybe the bounce house and some activities, some volleyball, some cornhole, um, maybe a movie. Um, and so we're going to have a lot of fun. So make sure you bring all your camping gear. Uh, we'll have a big fire. You say, you know what, I don't want to camp out. I don't want to stay overnight. Well, that's fine. Just come out anyway um, and have some, some fellowship and some good time around the fire. We just do ask that you, um, we'll have a sign-up sheet in the back as well that you um, bring a topping of your choice. Um, everything else will be provided. Just bring a topping of your choice for um, the potatoes, for your you know, baked potato, and that'll be a lot of fun. Also, we are starting up Kids for Christ here in a couple of weeks. Kids for Christ um, here in a couple of weeks, and we need volunteers. Uh, we have a um, couple of people that can't do it this year. Plus, so we have some college students that we helped last year that are not going to be able to help this year. And so we do need your help. If you've never worked in Kids for Christ or, and you would like to, please come and see me um, and I'll sign you up. We will have a meeting um, a week from this Wednesday um, talking about that. And so just make sure, and parents of, um, of kids, um, four years old all the way through the sixth grade, just make sure you're making preparations for that as well. All right, one, let, well, one more announcement. We do have the church anniversary coming up here in a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks, and we have sign-up sheets out on the board, and we're going to have a whole lot of fun. So if you have any questions about that, please see one of the deacons or one of the staff members, and we can put you to work. Um, we just want you to sign up. One of the greatest things that we're going to have this year is going to be a cake auction and a cake off. You know what? You, there's a lot of people out here that make cakes, that like to, to make cakes or make pies or, I not, guess not pies, but cakes or or some other kind of cake, or, or any kind of cake that you would like to make, okay? Whether it be a cheesecake, whether it be a cupcake, whatever it might be, okay? But cakes, okay? You know, I'm just, I just have a question. Did anybody think, you know, with me today and say, hey, I, I just wanted to bring it. I made a, I made a cake for church this morning. Anybody like that? Miss Karen, did you make a cake this morning? Anybody make a cake? Nobody? Oh, Miss Becky, go ahead and stand up. Did you make a cake? Oh, my goodness. So we have a cake now. All we need is an auctioneer. Is there any auctioneers? Brother Mark, are you an auctioneer? No. Auction oh, we got an auctioneer right here. Okay. Hey, we need people to bid. Who's going to start bidding on this, on this cake? Hi. Okay. Hey, right here. We are right here. We got, we got one right here. We just got one person. Anybody else going to bid? Ten. Oh, we got ten over here. Oh, come on. We can do better than that, can't we? Hey, here we go. He needs it, guys. Let him have it. Come on. <laughs> oh, 
Hey, it's going for a good cause, the missions trip, all right? 135. It's for the missions trip. Come on. Come on, Brother Joshua. Well, amen. Well, that's going to be hopefully a little bit better than what we just did at the, at the anniversary, okay? But come out, please, uh, make as many cakes as you would like. Uh, we're going to auction off all the cakes. We're also going to have a cake um, eating, not eating, <laughs> tasting contest. <laughs> yeah, um, tasting contest. And so if you would like to judge the cake contest, please go back there and sign up. Uh, but all of our proceeds for that cake auction will go to the mission trip. So we really, really uh, would like for you to do that. All right. Thank you very much. Let's just get an offering plate up here for David. I want to make sure <laughs> that that gets in. <laughs> All right. And the crowd's going to be down Friday night because no oatmeal raising cookies. He run the whole thing. I'll tell you, Mrs. DeWitt knows how to make them. She made me one this week, and it was delicious. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead and receive our tithes and offerings and gifts to the Lord at this time, and uh, Brother Keith's going to come lead us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be uh, in your house. We do pray now that you would uh, bless this offering that we're about to receive. We pray that uh, it would uh, be used to meet the needs of the church and our missionaries, Lord, and uh, we do just continue to pray for our services and uh, pray for the upcoming events, Lord. We pray for uh, participation and people that would I'd be willing to uh, give of themselves, Lord. And uh, Father, we just pray now that you bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen.
choir let's go ahead and stand and we're going to look at another song this morning 527 down at the cross where my savior died down where from cleansing from sin i cry lift it up this morning glory to his name 527 for all he's done for us lift it up glory to his name 527 down at the cross saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to seated 
And right now we'll have the ladies come and sing for us, Worship the Lord. if you would, to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter number 4. And as you find that, if you're able, please stand. And we're going to read beginning with verse number 8. 2 Kings chapter 8. Uh, chapter 4, verse 8, I'm sorry. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed 
to Shunan, where there was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as off as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for, uh, for him there a bed, a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And she, he said unto Gehazi, his servant, Call the Shumanite woman. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken uh, for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said to her, Call her. And when she, he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto the, thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son that season that Elisha had said unto her according to that, the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a certain day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, she, he set her on his knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. And she said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then he saddled uh, she saddled the, uh, an ass and said unto her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not uh, thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came to the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her far off that he said unto Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shumanite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, it is well. Please join us as we look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would bless uh, the message as it goes forth today. Help us to uh, gain some insight about our own self. Is it well with me? Are things well with each of us today? We ask that you help us to examine our hearts, examine our lives uh, so that we could go away and say, it is well. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Here's a woman that every preacher would like. Feeds him every time he comes by. That's pretty good. And then she even gives him a place to sleep so that she really takes care of him. But after all this took place, Elisha said, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, said, uh, what can I do for her? So Gehazi, go find out. Go ask her, what can I do? What does she need? And in verse uh, 13, I believe it is, uh, she said, uh, I don't need anything. I dwell among my own people. I'm okay. So Elisha then asked Gehazi, what does she need? Since she's not telling us, what does she need? And he said, well, she's getting old. Her husband is really old. They have no children. He said, okay, bring her to me. And he told her that 
about this season, you are going to have a child. And of course, she didn't believe him at first. That was uh, uh, past the time for the, that to take place. And she said, please don't lie to me. This is too important. But she bare a child, a son, just as Elisha had said. And then one day he went out to the fields and all of a sudden he got a terrible headache. And he complained and they carried him back to his mother and he died in his mother's lap. She takes the child and puts him on Elisha's bed, shuts the door, and then makes provision to go to see Elisha. So this triumph of having a child now had turned to a tragedy. Things that she had so wanted and then God had blessed, and by the way, God gave it to her when she had no hope. God knows what we want. God knows our hearts, and God knows our needs. But he gave her the child, but now the child has died. And she comes uh, to Elisha, and he asks three questions uh, of her in verse 26. He says, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And her answer is, it is well. Now, wait a minute. We know why she's there. We know what's taking place. How can this woman actually say it is well and she's got such tragedy in her life? How can she face such tra tragic circumstances and still say that it's well? Well, these three questions form the basis for our message today, and I think they are in proper order for us. So we're going to look at this for in our situation. But she said it was well, by the way, Elisha's going to raise the child. So... Uh, she knew it was well. She knew the answer ahead of time. But I wanted to focus on the questions today. First of all, I want to ask this question. Is it well with you? That's the first thing that every person needs to settle in their own mind. Is it well with you? If you fly an airplane, fly on an airplane, the pilot will, or the uh, stewardess or uh, they're attendants now, aren't they? Uh, see, you can tell how old I am. The attendant will, will say something like this. If something happens, an oxygen mask will come down. Put it on you before you put it on your child. And the reason is very simple. Until you're secure, until you're taken care of, you really can't help your child. You need to be well in order to take care of someone else that has a need. You see, we can't help others until it's well with ourselves. So first of all with this, is it well with your soul? That would be the question that I would have here. Romans chapter 14 and verse 12 uh, tells us that every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You may be a super parent, a super person, you may have taken care uh, uh, of, of a lot of things and you may do a lot of things and have a lot of abilities, but have you taken care of your greatest need? That's the question here. Are you prepared to meet God when you die? Hebrews 9 and verse 27, most of you know that, but it tells us as it is appointed unto man wants to die and after this, the judgment. We will die unless the rapture comes first and those of us who are saved will be caught up in that. We understand that. But after death comes a judgment. Are you ready for that? Ezekiel 14, uh, 18 and verse 20 says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. 
In other words, what uh, Ezekiel is saying there, the sin uh, that we have when we die doesn't go away. If we were wicked before we die, if, or other words, lost before we die, we're still lost. If we're righteous before we die, we're still righteous. Now, the way we get become righteous is we have the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ imputed to us when we receive Jesus as our Savior. There must be a time in your life when you've come to the point and recognized your sin, recognized your need, and come to a place where you've repented and asked Christ into your heart to be your Savior. That's the necessary thing because it says the soul who sins shall die. Now, I'm not talking about death of the body. We know physically that all of us are going to die at some time. But I'm talking of that of the soul. The Bible calls that the second death or the, uh, a spiritual death, if you will. Revelation 20 and verse 14 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. If it is not well with your soul, I want to tell you that you need Jesus Christ as your Savior. You need him. Ezekiel 18 and verse 27, And again, when that wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul. That's repentance. You have to turn away from what we have been and turn to Christ and allow him to save us and change our life. So is it well with your soul? Do you know that you're born again? Are you, do you, are you prepared for that event called death when you'll have to stand before God? Well, let's do the next question. Is it well with your life? It was with this mother. I don't see a lot of weeping and wailing here over the death of her son. It may have been. Her thought was just get to the man of God. He can take care of these things. Just go to him uh, and he will take care of it. Look at verse 21. We didn't read. Uh, I want you to read there with me. Verse 21 again. And she went up and laid hold on the bed. Uh, laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out and she called unto her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, wherefore wilt thou go to him? It is neither a new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. Immediately she knew where to go. She knew that there was a place to run to. In other words, we see her faith. The circumstances were not good. Her son had died, and yet she still has her faith in God. Now, I wish I could stand here and tell you that every bad thing that happens to you, God's going to immediately turn it around. That's not so. But we know that God always knows what's best. God knows how to care for us through difficult situations, it is our faith that makes a difference in those times. Do I trust him? Do I know that God knows where I, what's happening? Do I know that he knows what's best for me? Do I know that he can take care of me? Can you answer that? You see, faith makes a difference. When we walk by faith, it is always well, regardless of the circumstances. Circumstances are not always good. I don't like some of the circumstances that come into my life. I'm sure that you have some of those, but I do like the God who knows how to take care of the circumstances. I do know that the, I have a God who uh, is in control of those circumstances. So what about your life? Are you going through some struggles? And are you walking by faith and letting God take care of them? Is it well with you this morning? I think a second question here that he asked, is it well with your husband? I will change the wording just a little bit. Is it well with your marriage? Is it well with your marriage? 
before we can be the right kind of parent, we also must be the right kind of mates. You must, we need to understand that Christian homes are essential. And when I say a Christian home, I'm not saying folks that are saved. I'm saying a Christian home where people live like Christ is in control, where kids can see that God is working in our lives, where kids can understand that we know that we're living for Christ. But that takes both parents in order for that to happen. Sometimes there is only one parent who loves the Lord. Sometimes there's only one parent who is saved. And that creates some problems. Uh, that's that's a, a reality. But we have a situation in our society today where a commitment in marriage doesn't mean much anymore. It's just words that we say because that's part of the ceremony. But I think they're words that are a commitment to God and to man. So how's your relationship with your spouse? Look at this humanite woman. She followed scriptural procedures in her relationship. She asked her husband if they could remodel the house. She went to the head of the home and asked him so they could host the man of God. If, if it is to be well with your home, you must obey God's principles in marriage. You see, God made you to lovely, uh, lovingly meet the needs of your mate, both emotional and physical. First Corinthians 11.3 says, I would, not, I, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Uh, there's a biblical order of things that God has laid out in scripture. God's in control. He's the head. Uh, Christ is there. And then the man, then the woman, then the children. I, what can I tell you? And I don't want to get ahead of myself too much here, but I'm a little discouraged in our society today because it's the children who are running the homes, not the parents. If we've got things out of order, and any time you do that, you will have problems in the future. I will guarantee you that takes place. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, then uh, after he puts the order there, says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. We have a responsibility, men, as our wives submit to the authority that God has given, that we love them as Christ. Now, I often say in marriage counseling and, and even in, sometimes in marriage ceremonies that if a man loves his wife the way that Christ loved the church, the woman doesn't have to give up anything to make him the head of the home. Why? Because he gave everything for you and I. He left heaven that we could be saved. He died on the cross that we could be saved. He rose from the grave that we might be made righteous in the sight of God. So let me ask you, is it well with your soul and is it well with your marriage today? If we obey God in this, then we'll meet the needs of our mate, but also our mate will usually meet the needs that we have. Uh, and if we do this, your mate will meet those needs unless he or she is an idiot, and then you should have been more careful who you married. Then you can say, it is well with my soul. It is well with my marriage. And the third question he asks, is it well with your child? Some parents' priorities cause wonder about this. We're concerned about a child's growth. We feed them, help them to walk and talk. We're concerned about their health. We take them to the doctor, the dentist, or whatever they need. We're concerned about their popularity. So we do things to make sure that they fit in everywhere. Provide the latest fat and clothes, regardless of the cost. Make sports a big thing in their life, more than being where God wants them to be. 
we do whatever is necessary for these needs. But I see so many parents today who are trying to meet all of those needs and then are unconcerned about their souls, their spiritual life. And some have unsafe children or grandchildren, but never say anything to them about the Lord. That seems awful strange, doesn't it? That that which is eternal, we don't care about. But that which will fade away, we put a great emphasis on. And yet it's happening all over, even with Christian parents. I have had so many tell me over the years, uh, and uh, you get around as long as I have, you get all kinds of statements, but uh, I've had so many tell me over the years, well, I'm not going to make my kid go to church. All right. Why? Because I want them to make up their own mind. Well, fine. Don't tell them they can't play with fire. Let them make up their own mind. I, I can go on with that list. I, I don't think we want to play that all day long. But the reality is this is more important than anything else. So to have unsaved children or grandchildren and never do anything about it and never try to help them. They say they don't want to push them in these areas, but they have no trouble pushing them to be athletes or on and on with those things. Or here's one that uh, you might uh, relate to. I'm not going to send my child to camp this year because camp is too expensive. It's all relative. But we can spend $100 on a pair of jeans and not a few dollars more than that to send them to camp. By the way, camp is cheap. I had a camp brochure yesterday from when I was youth pastor. And I, at one of the very first youth camps that I took my kids to, and that cost, and they struggled to get the money to go to camp, and it was $17. Can you imagine that? And yet we had to find ways to help kids go to camp. It's just relative to the economy that you live in with that. You see, camp might be too expensive, but I can buy them a laptop or pay a cell phone bill for them and buy a phone. I can give them all the electronics they want, but uh, camp is not that important because, goodness, they're going to get a lot of preaching. They're going to get the Word of God. They might get saved. They might surrender their life to Christ. Uh, they might end up going into ministry. But that's not as important as having that cell phone. That's the way we look at it. What's wrong with the picture? Where is the concern about their spiritual lives? If you get a call some evening telling that your child was killed in a tragic accident, and I've had to deal with several of those over the years, it won't matter how popular the child was. It won't matter what kind of athlete they were. It will not matter how they were dressed. The only thing that will be important that time is their salvation. So why don't we make it the most important thing to begin with? Knowing that they're prepared to go out into, etern into eternity. The question is, is it well with your children? Is it well with your soul? Is it well with your marriage? And is it well with your children? I'm so thankful that there are godly mothers, mothers like this humanite woman who faithfully serve God with their lives. And their relationships with God and with their spouse and with their children are of uttermost importance to them. I'm so glad that there are some godly men just like that also. Concerned about their relationship with God and their relationship with their spouse and their relationship with their children. 
So Elisha's questions are for all of us to answer. Is it well? And if you can't say yes, why not? And if you know that you can't say yes, why not come to God today? Why not come and trust Christ as your Savior? Let him save your soul and forgive your sins. Why not pray for your home if things are not well? God knows he'll take care of them. Why not pray for your children and your grandchildren to be saved? Why not pray? Why not be concerned about them? Wouldn't it be great if every parent and grandparent would just spend a lot of time in prayer for that grandchild and their children? So if you've never been saved, if you need to reconnect with the Lord uh, in some way, you need to come now to pray about your relationship with him and with your family, with your children. What about that? Let's stand for prayer. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, the altar is open. There's a place for you to pray if you want to come. But before I have prayer and we sing an invitation hymn, let me ask a couple questions. Is there someone here that would just be honest enough to say, Preacher, today I know it's not well with my soul. I, I, I've never trusted Christ as Savior. I do not know that I'm going to heaven. I do not know that my sins are forgiven. Would you please pray for me? God's speaking to my heart. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Pray for me, preacher. God's speaking to my heart today. Thank you. God bless you. Another? Another? What, what about uh, uh, someone would say, I, I need to pray for my husband or my children or my grandchildren. Please pray for me because I need to win them to Christ. I've got some unsaved family that I love so much and I want to see them go to heaven. Would you please pray with me about that? Just raise your hand for a moment. That's several of us and it should be. Thank you. Okay. Now, before I go to the Lord in prayer about these things, I wonder if there's one that would say, Preacher, before... I do anything. I'm a Christian, but I need to get right with God. I need to be where God wants me to be. I know that I'm saved. It's well with my soul in that way, but my relationship with God is not well. Would you please pray for me? Maybe you've got some sin in your life that you need to deal with. And you need to repent of, but God's speaking to your heart. Just pray for me for a moment. Just raise your hand. Thank you. Others? Heavenly Father, as we looked around the auditorium this morning, we see a number of hands lifted. For those who need to know Jesus Christ as Savior, we pray that they would come. Let us take the Bible, your word, let someone show them how they can be saved, that their life can be changed, that it might be well with their soul. Others, for whatever reason, among family, children, grandchildren, husband, wife, recognize that there's some things lacking in their life. Help them to come and make those things a matter of prayer. For these who have said, pray for me because uh, I, there's some things I need to straighten out in my relationship before I can help others. And so I pray that you help them to come today. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Page 370 in your hymn book, Take My Life and Let It Be. As we sing together, God speaks to your heart. Uh, now's the time to come. If you need to be saved, slip out of your seat. One of the leaders up here will pray with you and show them uh, uh, how, show you how you can be saved. Christian, you need to deal with some things. Someone will meet you and pray with you. But now's the time to come. Won't you come? Take my life and let it be on
we continue singing, God speaks to your heart. Won't you come? Thank you. Please be seated for just a moment. Remember, college students, if you come stand by me in the foyer, you let them know that you're going to be pray, praying for them as they go away. Uh, Anaya Coleman, where's she at? Right back here? All right. She uh, comes forward. She's been saved and wants to follow the Lord in baptism. I want her to come stand in the foyer, uh, foyer with me also. You come by and let her know that we're praying for her. I think we have uh, several teens, five to baptize tonight mostly from youth camp and so we're thankful for that and so uh, uh, just be aware of that also so uh, you telling me something no oh. you're shaking your head and smiling I don't know she's kind of weird sometimes <laughs> all right anyway so let's stand and be dismissed in prayer we'll see you tonight uh, at six o'clock for the evening service and so Brother Brent, would you come up and dismiss us, please? Our dear God, we do pray that it is well with us as far as our relationship with you, with our family, with our children. If not, that we will seek your will and to get things right. We pray as we head out today that we will be servants as you would have us to be to go out and take the light to a world that is in need in jesus name amen